In this part I will present you the Art Gallery Theorem. This is a very fundamental result by Hvatal from 1975. And this theorem says, if we want to surveil a simple polygon with n vertices, then n over 3 floor cameras are sometimes necessary and they are always sufficient. And now we want to prove this theorem. The first part is sometimes necessary. So now you can start thinking about it. If you have some large n, can you find a polygon with exactly n vertices where you need about n over 3 cameras? If it's a few more, that's fine, but it should be n over 3 plus a constant number. Could you find a polygon? I will show you the polygon that they show in the book by de Beer et al. And this is this spiky thing, maybe uh, you can call it a spiky comp. We have all these spikes and you can construct it in such a way that wherever I place a camera, for example here, it can never look into two spikes at the same time. It cannot see two of these corners. So if I look at just the visibility of this point here and I extend it a bit and here I extend it a bit, the only points that can see this corner here lie inside this triangle. This one. And the same way, the only points that can see this corner here lie inside this triangle. And these triangles do not overlap. So for each of these spikes, I need one camera. And with one camera by a spike, I can easily do it. Just place it down here opposite of the spike and we're done. And how many corners do we have? For the first spike, we can count three. For the second one, three. Then again, three. And for the last one, we again count three. So we have n over three spikes, and that means we need exactly n over three cameras to cover it. Let's move on to the sufficient part. So we want to show that you can cover them all with n over three cameras. So basically, we want to give an algorithm that always uses at most n over three cameras to cover a simple polygon. And of course, we want to use what we've just found out, that we can triangulate any simple polygon into n minus two triangles. Now, how do we go from this triangulation with n minus two triangles to a cover with at most n over three cameras? What we will do is we will three color the vertices. So every corner will get one of three colors. And we will three color it in a way that no two vertices of the same color are connected, not on the boundary and not with an internal edge. This can always be done for an outer planar graph. We can interpret what we've done here as a graph. We, our corners are our vertices and the boundary and all these new edges here are the edges of the graph. And this graph is outer planar. That means that all the vertices lie on the outer face. Or the tests are crossing free drawing such that all the vertices lie on the outer face, which we see here. And those we can always three color. If you don't know about this outer planar graph stuff, that's not important here. That's just for terminology, but we will do it manually. And to get such a three coloring, we will make use of the dual of this graph. To get the dual of a graph, we place a vertex in every face. So here we place a vertex in all of these triangles. And now these dual vertices are connected if the corresponding faces share an edge. So in this case, this means these two vertices are connected because the triangles that they correspond to share a boundary. And then this vertex is also connected to this one and this one because here it shares the other boundaries. And that way, each of these vertices is connected to at most three other vertices because the triangle it lies in has three boundaries. But some of them are only connected to one or two because the boundary of the triangle is also a boundary of the polygon. It is easy to show that this is a tree. We will not do it in detail here, but basically what you can do is you look for these ears. And an ear is one triangle where two of its boundaries are a boundary of the polygon. And this corresponds to a leaf in the dual. And if I remove it, I get again a polygon. And then inductively, we can show that all the polygons have such an ear, so they always have a leaf. And if you attach a leaf to a tree, then you again have a tree. Now we want to use this dual tree to give us an order in which we process all these triangles. So we take any arbitrary leaf, 
let's say this one, and we root the tree in it. So we will direct all the edges away from this leaf. This will look like this. And in this order, we want to process all the triangles. So we start with the very first triangle that corresponds to this leaf. And now, how do we get a three coloring of this? Remember, no two vertices that share an edge are allowed to have the same color. So all the three vertices must get different colors. We don't care which ones. We can just pick any three colors. Here I have red, green, and purple. So we give those colors to these three vertices. And now we walk along this dual tree to the next triangle. And when moving to the next triangle, we walk over an edge. And for this edge, both vertices already have a color. So when we get to this new triangle, there's only one color left for this vertex. So we traverse the dual tree, and in every step we pick up triangle and give the remaining color to the remaining vertex. Go to the next one, this has to be red. This one here, we already have green and red, so it has to be purple. And so on, we can walk through the whole polygon and give a color to every vertex. And what do we do with these colors? Let's say we pick one color, let's say the green one, and we place a camera on all the green vertices. What does this give us? Every triangle has a vertex of every color on its boundary. So for every triangle we have here, one of the vertices on its boundary is green. That means if you pick all the green vertices, then we have picked a vertex on the corner of every triangle. And so we cover all the triangles. That means all these three color classes, if you pick all red or all green or all purple vertices, this always gives us an art gallery surveillance. And how can we now estimate the size of these surveillances that we get? Well, we just pick the smallest color class. So we pick the color that has the smallest number of vertices. And since there are n vertices in total, the average number of vertices per color is n over 3. So the smallest has the most n over 3 vertices. That means if we pick just here the red vertices, that gives us a cover with at most n over 3 cameras. So we've basically shown the art gallery theorem, but there's one step missing. I told you, you can always triangulate a polygon, but we don't know how to do it yet. So we still have to find an algorithm how we can triangulate a simple polygon. How would you do it? I mean, we had a proof that there is always a triangulation. And that proof was basically a constructive. So we can use this proof to get an algorithm. You just pick a vertex at an edge somewhere and then cut the polygon into smaller ones and then you recurse there. And to find this edge that we want to add, if it's just the neighbors of the vertexes we picked, then it's very easy. But in general, we have to walk along the whole boundary of uh, the polygon to find out if there is an intersection somewhere. So we have to walk along the whole polygon in every step to figure out which edge we want to add. That means every step takes time linear in the number of vertices. And then if we always only cut away one vertex, that means in the first step we need order of n, then n minus 1, then n minus 2, and so on time. So we need order of n squared time. And maybe by now you know I don't like order of n squared. I want something faster. And indeed we can get a faster triangulation if we use two steps instead of one. So we are given some polygon, a simple polygon with n vertices. In the first step, we want to partition it into nice pieces. And our nice pieces now are not triangles anymore, but something larger. And then we want to partition all these nice pieces into triangles. And if we carefully choose how our nice pieces are supposed to look like, then this can be done easily. Our goal is to find these nice pieces in order of n log n time. And then for each of these pieces, we can, in order number of vertices it has, find the triangles. And what kind of nice pieces would you use? Uh, one way would, of course, be to again use convex pieces. 
but that's not that easy. So we will use a generalization of it. We will use Y monotone pieces. In a convex polygon, for all two points, the connection between them must lie in the polygon. In a y-monotone polygon, that has to only be the case for two vertices with the same y-coordinate. Or if we intersect any horizontal line with our polygon, then this gives us a connected intersection. So for example, a convex polygon of course is y-monotone, but this polygon here is not convex, but it's still y-monotone. Because whatever line we lie through it, we can only get one piece of the polygon. On the other hand, this is not y-monotone, this is x-monotone, but if I lay one vertical line through it like this, then the intersection is not connected because we get this part and this part. So this is not a y-monotone polygon. And in the next part, we want to figure out how we can do this first step. How can we divide our polygon into these y-monotone pieces in order of n log n time?